So let me just take a quick survey. How many people own an electric vehicle in the crowd? Okay, let me do the opposite. How many people do not own an electric vehicle in the crowd? Okay. How many people have heard of electric motorcycles prior to me standing here? Okay, the opposite. How many people have not heard of electric motorcycles? Okay, so I'm talking to two people in the crowd. <laughs> okay. Let, let me also try to see if my clicker is working here. There you go. Great. All right. So let me give you a little bit of my story. Uh, my decision to go electric. Well, first off, um, when I was researching this topic, it was either a motorcycle or a car. And a car was cost prohibitive. I was looking for me right now. I was looking in between a Tesla Model S, a used one, versus a zero motorcycle. So the decision though was, as you all know, since everyone here drives electric, maintaining ice cars. I literally one time was underneath a car and I was changing the coolant and the coolant came down and all over my face and down my body. And I said, I'm done and I'm done. Yeah, and that, that was it right there. And of course, there's the environmental issues and less time and maintenance. And I said, I'm done maintaining ice vehicles. So let's a little bit about zero motorcycles. Uh, one attractive thing was the dealer is one mile from my house. And since what's unique, as you all know, what's unique about electric vehicles is the shop down the road probably cannot repair your car or your bike. So the proximity to a dealer is one thing I'm telling people is a key thing if you're going to entertain owning an electric vehicle or electric motorcycle. So the Triumph dealer on Morena Boulevard also is a zero dealer and they're now selling zero motorcycles. Zero is made up in Santa Cruz and the, the fourth bullet down only 2000 units a year was surprising to me in the research that I did. And in comparison, the top selling vehicle is Ford F-150. They sell a million trucks a year, just for comparison. So one million versus 2,000. Um, Jay Leno, uh, obviously everybody knows Jay Leno's garage. And yes, this is me with the poser picture back in uh, 2000. Oh, sorry, give me one second on the thing. But in 2008, he predicted the future of motorcycles was electric. And we all agree it is, but here it is. 11 years later, and the number one manufacturer is selling 2,000 units a year. So that's an interesting perspective. Purchasing and owning. <clears throat> so the initial purchase, the initial purchase, I came across zero motorcycles, again, because I live so close to the dealer, and the research said that they were $20,000 new. So I found a used one six months old in Orange County, there's a dealer in LA, dealer in Orange County, and a dealer in San Diego for our proximity. And I found a six month old one for $15,000. So this is some uh, statistics from the dealer, from the dealer. And the column on the left is the stock configuration the column on the right is what they call a power tank, and all that is is an additional battery, a smaller additional battery in addition to what you get. And so therefore, the range also on motorcycles, everyone, obviously everyone asks, what's the range, right? And that is on the next slide. So on the right, on this chart, is actual numbers from my usage. In other words, what the dealer doesn't tell you. So the key thing is that the cost to recharge is $2, roughly $2.75, and the range is 100 miles, the second row down. I always tell people I get 100 miles for a full charge. Um, let me see any other key things. I have what's called the charge tank option. And what that is, is just level two. Everybody here in this room knows level one versus level two. Also, real quick, the difference between a car and a bike, motorcycle, is that you can charge a motorcycle on level one. 
you can charge a car, but you'll be there a week. But I'll go over somebody's house and I'll stay for dinner and I can plug it into their house. And that also was a key difference. So the level two, you can get a full charge at two and a half hours, two and a half hours for level two charging. So initial modifications, initial modifications. So when anybody buys a car or a bike, there's always little tweaks you want to make, right? So the one thing is that I would tell you about this bike, the handlebars are way too low. I don't like the crotch rocket feel. I don't like leaning over the tank. And I actually had hand and wrist pain from so many miles and leaning my entire body weight on my hands. So I had to get new handlebars and lift the handlebars up. So now I'm sitting upright. That was one main thing. The second thing is that the seat is very slanted and it cost me $300 to get a different seat but the frame is still slanted. If they did this for the, a car, nobody would buy the car. You're constantly sliding forward all the time. So it's, it's uncomfortable seat, and that's one of the worst critiques that people have said about these bikes. Um, okay, I'm just looking at my notes here real quick. So day-to-day -day usage, they have an app for that. So you can Bluetooth your bike to your phone and configure the performance of your bike. So that's unique. And I, I mean, I know Tesla has a little bit of that right now. Also, it's very quiet. I'm, look, I'm sorry, I'm just glancing at my notes. The, I've had gas bikes for 30 years. How quiet this is. The neighbors love it. And my girlfriend is here in the audience, and we can actually talk to each other going down the road. That's what's really unique, and that's what we really enjoy. Um, no level two charging is needed, and the bed angle on the seat is uh, a repeat from what I've already said. Just kind of looking at my notes here. So cost analysis versus a gas bike. So if 100 miles costs $2.00, and 75 cents, roughly, an uh, internal combustion engine costs $10.25, so you get a return on investment of $5,000 in 11 years. So all of us here know about electric cars. It's interesting because I'm used to talking to people who know nothing about this. But you do obviously get a return on investment. And here's some actual numbers, my gas bike versus the electric bike. This is also really interesting, and of course, everybody in this room also knows this, but the chart on the right is the performance of the gas bike, and the chart on the left is my actual car that I've had for 20 years. So on the right, everybody knows you have instant torque right off the starting line at zero RPM or at one RPM versus a gas engine that has to come up to about three or 4,000 RPM in order to perform. So charging at home, again, level one charging. I had, um, I had to add an additional breaker, I added an additional outlet. A proper extension cord is, is necessary, or you get this. If you do not use proper extension cords on level one charging, I had three extension cords melt. And then this is a photo of another user that th this is the entrance to the bike. This is where the charging cable went into the bike. Okay? So it is necessary and also if if it can melt something it may also cause fire. I'm just throwing that out there but you have to use proper gauge wires whenever you plug these things in. And charging at home, level two. So since I bought the motorcycle first, I knew the car was next. So I installed a level two charger at my house. And the total cost, including everything, was $1,000, parts and labor. So I get two and a half hours charge time on level two charging. Also, in my opinion, some of the chargers come with Wi-Fi. 
I never used the Wi-Fi. I thought I did. I'm an engineer. I thought I'd analyze all the data. No, that never happened. Just plug it in and go. So if you're looking at a charger and they sell you on Wi-Fi, my opinion is you don't need it. So charging away from home. The common critique is that 100 miles is too short. Just plan your trip. And apps such as um, PlugShare and ChargePoint, also hotels, malls, and casinos all have free charging. Again, I'm singing to the choir here. Uh, let's see what else. Also at my work, most pl two places that I've worked at have level one charging, have outdoor outlets. So I go to work and they pay for the gas bill. Pros and cons. So this was in line with my values. I thought that $15,000 was a little steep, but it's in line with my values. So I'm going to spend my money so that this company is successful. Uh, no shifting. I went on a mountain ride up to Mount Palomar, and that was new to me because after 30 years, after 30 years of downshifting, upshifting, downshifting in mountain roads, that was eye-opening to do one less thing on, on, the, on the highway. I really haven't had any range problems or range anxiety, $2.75 for a tank of gas. Also, the, I've already fully paid off the bike and I'm being uh, uh, told I'm running out of time. So let's just cut to the chase. So what, what broke in six months? The, the level two charger on the bike, I'm on my third one, under warranty under warranty. So there's obviously a vendor issue on their level two charger. Um, melted extension cords, uh, their front uh, brake rotor warped, the horn relay, which is just minor electrical. And then if you add it all up, you get this. Seven months of ownership, um, grand total $18,000 and seven cents per mile, where my car is 12 cents per mile, which I think 12 cents for a car is doing really good for, ice, for a nice car. And thanks so much. And just as a quick aside, I maintain a motorcycle parking map on the internet. And I'm not out for any money at all. I just do this on the side. And it's austin-ent.com slash SDCYC parking. And that way I can find where to park downtown. And what's funny is most people are taking a photo of the very last slide for my parking map. <laughs> yes, any questions? Does it regen? Oh uh, yes, yes. The app for that, you can adjust the regen. Correct. The the brakes. Or the front brake regen. Was that? How did you work a front brake or regen? I don't know. I I just started going down the road, and when you put the pedal on or the brake on, sorry, you hear, you feel like a pop 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 pop. And. I have 15,000 miles on my Volt on the original brakes. I I wish that happened to me. <laughs> Any questions? Um, I haven't driven the one with an extra battery. I have I have the one with the level two charger. Okay, so you have to compare to that. Oh, and well, to give you a tip is if I drive solo. I get 100 miles. If I drive two people, I get 80 miles. Any other questions? Oh, well, one more. Sorry. A comment that I, I ran into some American Legion uh, riders. They have a group of motorcycle riders. And I asked, well, what's the requirement? In all of San Diego, is anybody there who had electric motorcycle? They said, no. And I said, well, what's the requirement if you're going to be a member? And they said, 350 cc. Oh, OK. You're yeah, right, right. My insurance, my insurance didn't have any clue what to do, so they put me at 1,200 cc and jacked my rates. Yeah. <laughs>